everybody, happy new year. And you might be thinking today is the perfect day or <laughs> now is the perfect time to write your new year's resolutions and get them done. And I'm here to say, screw resolutions, let's make a plan. So from the resolutions that you might've already thought about, what we want to do first of all is to connect with the aspirational side of that. The reason we want to do this is because one of the reasons that so many New Year's resolutions fail, and here we're talking about 80% of New Year's resolutions that people make are failing before the end of January. So, so many of them are failing, why? Well, one of the reasons is that they're non-aspirational, they're negative, they connect us with this not doing rather than this, what will I be able to achieve if I do do it? So I want you to think first of all about the goals, about these major goals that you might have for your life for the next year and imagine what it'll be like when you achieve those goals. So you really need to take a moment to visualize a little bit and these could be anything. It could be sorting out my business or it could be uh, sorting out myself, my head, my, my uh, mental health. It could be something as simple or not so simple as getting fit. So these are starting with your New Year's resolutions, your normal ones that you would make. Think about what's the aspiration behind that? What do I want to feel? How will it feel when I achieve this? How will I feel in particular? And how will my life have changed? So really think about that to, in terms of what you aspire to. Then we can start breaking it down, right? In order to achieve that, what is the thing before that that needs to be achieved? So before that, okay, so let's take the example of getting fit. Well, what I might need to do is to make sure that I'm eating healthily, that I'm exercising, and that I'm getting enough sleep. So they could be three areas that need to be worked on. Okay, and within those three areas, what are some of the things that we could start doing now? So this is not, if you have never gone to the gym before, suddenly imposing on yourself that you have to go to the gym every day. This is starting with something small. And it might be something like, I'm gonna go out for a 10 minute walk every day. I'm going to um, make my food instead of buying it in. Something that is quite specific, that is a way to start because you don't need to achieve those big aspirations tomorrow and you won't achieve them tomorrow, they take time. And in order to take time, in order to achieve them, you need to move forward little by little, establishing these smaller goals that build up to the bigger goals. So I always write down my big goals, the big rocks, if you like, the big goals, and then I start breaking that down into smaller things. And I try not to overload my day with more than a few things to work on. So if you're trying to change various habits at the same time, that's okay, but try not to do more than three, for example. And you can use something that's quite useful, which is called a habit tracker. If you go online, you can get a printout version of a habit tracker. All it is, is sort of 31 squares for each month that you literally tick off when you've achieved that habit. So you might put something like, you know, the 10 minute walk per day. So I put that down, I write that at the top of my piece of paper and I go ticking off those 10 minute walks per day. And the idea is that you move forward little by little in order to achieve what you want to achieve. And they're not resolutions, they're plans. This is something positive. This is something that you can move forward with for the rest of the year, and it's very specific. So one thing that I really liked when I was looking into this is that I'd come across SMART goals, and we probably all know what SMART goals are. If you don't, I'll make another video on it sometime, but it's, it's trying to be very specific and bearing in mind the time and making sure it's actionable and all of this kind of thing. I came across ART goals, and ART goals is about accountability, resonance, and thrill. And this is about how you define your big goals. So your big goals, starting from the end, they need to be thrilling. They need to be something that is really motivating you, that's a little bit scary, that's definitely stepping out of your comfort zone. They need to resonate with you. So when you think about them, you really need to think, wow, this is something I want to do. This resonates with me. It's important for me. It fits with who I am. And then 
you also need some kind of accountability. So accountability could be posting something on social media about what you're going to do, but better would be telling a friend about it and asking that friend to follow up with you. Because once we voice things, once we write them down, they become more real. So you can even do this in your own journal and write these big rock goals and why they're thrilling and why, they, um, why they're important to you into that diary. And that would really help you to make sure that they're a reality. So for me, making New Year's resolutions, do it, don't do it, um, I don't think it's very effective. It's quite a negative way of starting the year. Why don't we just make a plan and start by step one of that plan, which is quite small and just edges forward little by little until by mid-year you will have achieved those goals and hardly really felt the, the pressure of having to do it because you've literally done it little by little as you've gone forward. And you can obviously adjust the plan as you go on. So that's all I wanted to say. Have a great 2022 and see you next time.